What's up guys, thanks so much for checking out the channel again today. We're continuing our series of Kill Team Arena mission reviews or scenario reviews. And today we have Desperate Destruction for you guys. So the little background blurb here. Uh, as one Kill Team deploys to sabotage an enemy's armory by planting explosives in the ammunition stockpile at the facility's heart, another moves to stop them from reaching their goal. Before long, the building echoes with the sounds of frenzied battle. So um, very similar in some sense to the Secure the Delivery Sites mission, but we'll take a look at what, um, what this one actually entails for us. So kill teams here. This is a mission for two players. Uh, each player chooses uh, three arena objectives as described on page 20 of arena and then musters a battleforged kill team as also described on page 18 of kill team arena. So the battlefield itself is a kill zone armorium stockpile and create the battlefield and set up the terrain again as shown on pages 12 to 13. We'll took, take a look at the map on the backside in just a second. But then you also set up four objective markers as shown on the reverse of the card. So we'll get to that in just a moment. No scouting phase as per usual here. And then on the deployment side, uh, so both players roll off. The loser of the roll off chooses which deployment zone will be their own. The other deployment zone will then be their opponents, of course. The players then take it in turns, deploy one model uh, from their kill team, uh, starting with uh, the loser of the roll-off, and then you have to be entirely in the deployment zone there, so no dipping uh, out just a little bit uh, with the bases or anything like that. Um, so definitely keep keep yourself honest, keep your opponent honest on that, of course. Um, if a player runs out of models, uh, then you basically just skip until everything's out and actually deployed. And then once the players have set up the models, uh, deployment ends, and then the battle round begins. So this is, again, just a four-round um, game here, so battle length. And then the victory condition, so how do we actually win? But before we get to that, actually, let's go and flip over and just take a quick look at the map. Um, just to kind of make that clear for everybody. So this one, um, you have the opposing zones here. You can kind of see um, some of the uh, terrain setups that they suggest here, and then sort of some of the pathways and uh, like walls and doors. Um, and here, so um, somewhat, I think, yeah, it's like kind of uh, mirrored here, but then you have that stockpile hatch in the middle there but um, to get to it you have to kind of like get into the doors here on either side so that's definitely going to create a interesting uh, kill zone kind of pun intended there um, so yeah you can't just you know run up the center like that but um, you're gonna have to navigate those doors um, so it's going to be an interesting battle to see which uh, you know which side here gets uh, most of the action um, but you do definitely want to I think have a little bit on both sides uh, just to keep your opponent honest you wouldn't want to um, you know, go all in on one flank necessarily um, if the opponent's just going to do the same on the opposite. So that's um, not necessarily gaining an advantage. But um, so it'll be interesting uh, to see who kind of gets um, up close and personal first uh, there as well. So, but anyway, let's flip back over and then we'll get into the, um, the rest of the objectives and kind of explain that as well. And we do have those four objectives here as well. So we'll get to that again in just a moment. Victory condition. So there is quite a bit here. Um, so points are scored in the following way. Access to the hatch. At the end of the battle round, a player scores one victory point if they control any uh, objective markers. Two if they control the two objective markers closest to their opponent's zone, which will be pretty rough. Um, but, you know, I think if you can push that already, you're kind of dominating the game most likely. Um, and then in addition, you score one point if you control the stockpile hatch. So again, that's that sort of thing right in the middle there and the player controls it if the total wounds characteristic of models from their kill team that are wholly within the stockpile hatch is higher than the total wounds of the opponents uh, in the same way player can't score more than nine victory points for this uh, victory condition in this mission so just keep that in mind again just for uh for rather quick rounds so um scoring is gonna be kind of fast and furious there um and um you know it's probably depending on what of course is happening with you know the uh what you have what your opponent has type of army you know, or type of that type of army but uh you know type of kill team you've put together um you know it may be a bit hard or unrealistic at least initially to think about going for both of their uh, victory or uh, their objective markers um, just because, uh, you know, realistically the battle is probably going to be decided somewhere in the middle, at least initially, but you should certainly at least try to get, um, one of those objective markers locked down at least. So you're scoring that point, um, and then just kind of see where you can push and maybe actually take control of their objective markers. So, um, and then, you know, uh, obviously the stockpile is a great, uh, or stockpile hatch here is a great opportunity just to get that extra point coming in as well. So that being said though, 
We do have the arena objectives as well, so you get cut apart, cut off the head, engage on all fronts, proximity alert, and thin their ranks. So again, a nice little selection there. Um, and then there is also headlong charge here. So at the end of the movement phase, you score a victory point if two or more models from your kill team charged in that phase. And again, this is going to be um, uh, not just a battle of positioning as it usually is um, with uh, these, uh, these arena missions, but... Um, you know, this is going to be, I think, one that certainly favors the aggressor just to get those uh, advantageous spots. Um, so you can kind of position yourself in, in the best possible ways. And again, um, having sort of two corridors to really uh, work with and uh, just kind of choose what kind of approach you're going to take. And again, maybe counteract what the opponent is going to be doing there too. So those are definitely things to consider. But nonetheless, um, that's another way to get uh, victory points there. So something to keep in mind too, if this is just you know a one-off, you might want to um, at least bring some close combat capability in your list if you can, um, just because um, you know the opponent may certainly be doing or gunning for that as well. Um, and then also at the end of the battle, the player with the most victory points is the winner, of course. Um, so, and then if there's a tie... And one player controls the stockpile hatch at the end, then that player's the winner. And if there's still a tie, then the game is a draw. So, um, so just keep that in mind. The stockpile hatch in that um, dead center will play an extra role there. Um, and again, is um, something that is at least worth gunning for and at least making a push on the last uh, turn, if at all possible. Um, so, in some ways, having the um, being at the bottom bottom of the turn there uh, kind of can be an advantage just so you can kind of make that last minute play for it um, and at least contest it and keep it away from the opponent if that would um, you know uh, either help get you another point or um, at least you know force a force a like a true draw so nonetheless another really interesting mission this one's definitely a little more um, like I said geared I think towards aggressive play than the secure the delivery sites but um, again all these are pretty fun missions in their own right and certainly worth playing uh, multiple times just you know with um, different kill teams of your own trying out different strategies and of course seeing what the opponent brings and what works best and maybe not so uh, well there uh, as well so um, you know both the initial deployment zones are pretty interesting um, and then uh, you know just working your way out of there and then seeing um, what you need to do to um, again work towards that stockpile hatch so and again definitely going to require some i think very solid and ingenious play um, to score the opponents um you know uh two objectives there uh but i feel like you know if you're if you're able to do that already you're pr in most situations probably already winning the battle but you know th weird things happen so um nonetheless uh, a fun one i think so um Oops, we got that upside down here. So uh, let us know in the comments, guys. What uh, do you think about Desperate Destruction? Have you played it? Uh, with what kind of forces? What kind of, what have the results been? Um, things you've noticed worked well, maybe not so well. Um, you know, uh, have you kind of tried a balanced force between like shooting and combat ability? Have you gone all in on combat? I mean, we talked about this being, I think, an aggressive mission. Um, can you can you really go for that? Um, um, or have you gone all in on shooting and just tried to lock? Uh, sort of some of these corridors and avenues or approaches down and then just um, walk onto the objectives because you've basically shot the opponent off of them um, or prevented them from being able to you know, really contest anything without, again, eating a lot of return fire. Um, so yeah, let us know in the comments, like I said, and um, we will definitely be continuing on our series here. Like and subscribe if you haven't already, guys. And uh, thanks again so much for stopping by. We really do appreciate you guys. Take care. We'll see you in the next one.